Welcome to Old Stuff Show. Before we get started today, uh, I wonder if you could do, uh, do us a favor and uh, push the subscribe button. That uh, helps us, but it also gives you an up heads up uh, for upcoming videos, and uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, today, we are looking at uh, the whole concept of souvenirs which uh, have been brought home as a result of travel. And uh, there's lots of examples in the, uh, in the past. Uh, it, recently, of course, uh, when we were able to travel, uh, we would bring back things, but um, I don't know, I think uh, way back the, the little souvenir trinkets were, were kind of uh, important and uh, a good reminder for those people that they, they had been to a variety of different places. So we'll have some fun with this today and uh, look at a variety of things that seem to uh, be still around and uh, mementos of people's travel in the past. I guess the most common uh, would have been the, uh, the old postcard. And uh, the, uh, this one that I have in my hand is from uh, Godrich, Ontario. It's called the Alex Cabins. And uh, it would be probably vintage 1950. People, um, when they traveled after the Second War, started off somewhat staying in cabins like that, and uh, then it evolved into what were called tourist homes. There's still some of those around. I know in Niagara Falls there's numerous uh, private homes that uh, they take people in as part of their accommodation option. and. Then the motels came in and they became more popular uh, in the, starting in the 1950s and through the 60s. And then it seems that uh, in more recent times the big hotel chains have taken over. Motels aren't quite as important as they used to be. But every hotel had a little envelope and paper that you could write home to your family and show them where you're staying and where you've been. Uh, just the common everyday Main Street postcard of places traveled. In the postcard aspect I've mentioned in my program on old postcards, Main Street scenes are one of the more important kinds of collectibles in postcards. Any interior things, this is a interior of a drugstore in, uh, in Florida in the 1950s, that type of thing was kind of popular too. Kind of, for kids, neat little thing. Uh, the old days, those little little hats. Uh, Toronto, Canada, might have been uh, something that a young person would have brought home as a memento of their travels. Patches, uh, patches like uh, this Regina one is very beautiful. And of course, you couldn't couldn't travel anywhere without uh, the help of in those days of uh, of gas station road maps. So Esso, for example, uh, and others put out gas station maps, and they were road maps were free. You could fill up with gas and then uh, ask them for a map. And uh, every station, Esso, Texaco, uh, Golf, did the same thing. And uh, the neat thing about the the maps. Uh, as a collectible, you can see um, what highways, what thoroughfares, what expressways uh, were not there at the time and, and how they progressed through the uh, collection of, your, of the road maps. Each town or city uh, had a tourist uh, department and they would put out special brochures about their, their city, the highlights of things that were available. And uh, so this would be kind of the, the main attractions in Edmonton at that time. And this is around 1950s. And again, you can see with pictures of the city uh, how things have changed uh, between then and now. If you were looking at interior rather than state or provincial road maps, uh, you can certainly get, uh, you had to have street maps for the individual cities, that's uh, Chicago and, and New York. 
And then, of course, uh, if you were looking for specific things to do, and then again, the tourist places would have these special little brochures or booklets. Uh, this is Vancouver, of the most popular spots to visit. And these are all collectible. More so maybe for the individual town or city where people live and they like to have mementos of, of their own city. But people that did travel brought them home and sometimes they're available in a big box in a basement that uh, I've seen from time to time. Again, another street guide, Arrow, was a well-known company that produced the street guides. To get there, Airlines was one possibility, and uh, again, it's kind of interesting to see how Air Canada used to be called Trans Canada Airlines, TCA, and the logo. And another one in here, and what's really interesting in this one would be the all the flight information and the uh, the cost. Um, quite a bit less money, of course, in those days. If you were traveling to uh, a town and uh, you uh, wanted to get a local newspaper. Uh, often these newspapers came home with the people as mementos of their trip. And so here's an Exeter Times from 1931. Um, again, somebody maybe has visited there and just uh, put the newspaper in a box and it stayed there for many, many times, for many years. Young girls were very interested in getting little charms for their charm bracelet from places that uh, they visited. And on this one, for example, there's uh, the maple leaf uh, for Canada. And so often it was designated for a town or a city that they'd been to or country. And it became quite a good collection. Spoons were extremely important. I've been to so many houses in uh, my time of hunting for treasures that had uh, big racks of spoons that were just spoons from cities and towns that they had been to and they made sure that they brought back a, a spoon to, uh, to make sure it was a memento that they could add to their collection. The sterling ones, of course, are the more valuable ones, so when I'm looking at these big collections of spoons, I'm looking on the back to see if it does say sterling. This one's silver plate. For me, the, uh, the value as far as selling, not too many people are buying spoons today for their uh, nostalgic reasons, but uh, mainly for uh, silver content. And uh, they would take it to a, a gold buyer, a silver buyer, and they would uh, get the, the value of it for its silver content. Some of the uh, more unique items that I've uh, come upon in my time of travel around the country is this belt. This is from the Canadian National Exhibition. And so it's a children's belt and uh, it, it's a great shape. Just one of those odd things that uh, is a leftover from the past where somebody had gone to the, the exhibition and uh, they picked up a little belt as a souvenir. So that's a very unique and very interesting in terms of its uh, collectability. You don't see too much of that kind of thing around today. I do know of people though that do collect just C&E um, items from advertising to souvenir items like that that has been uh, collected over the past. And there's people that have been to the C&E every year. Or a, a town like Brantford which uh, is where Alexander Graham Bell did some of his work. This one is um, a little package of a telephone and uh, a pen, birthplace of the telephone, and uh, it cost originally 350, just celebrating the anniversary of uh, the Bell Centennial, 1874 to 1974. So that's kind of unusual and interesting. And you get into all kinds of these uh, ceramic uh, souvenirs. So this one is kind of interesting. This is from, uh, this is uh, Cochrane, Ontario. And it's a little bell. And it says RCMP, Cochrane, Ontario, with a buffalo on top. 
it's quite quite unique. This one is what the, the Detroit, Michigan skyline. Uh, here we have a little plate, and it's from uh, Medicine Hat, Alberta, again with a RCMP logo on it. And every town or city, I, I think even today, there's a souvenir shop that has all kinds of little odds and ends that you can pick up. There's a little planter from Center Island, just off of Toronto, which is a neat little souvenir. And it does have the name on the on the base there. Ashtrays. This one is typically Niagara Falls. A little bit of carnival glass. And here we have a little frog that says London, Ontario, which is where we are right now. It's just a little frog. Uh, this is kind of an unusual one. This is from a, an ocean liner, and uh, it's uh, called uh, New York Grace Lines. And I don't know what it was used for. That's the problem. But it's a little, quite old. It has a uh, thing that comes out, some holes on the top. This goes back in, and there's a little lid for it and it's marked Grace Line. Now it might have been a local line that toured, toured around outside the city or it might have gone to other distant places. I, I don't know much about it. But that was somebody's souvenir that was brought back from a memento of their travel. Maybe the most common souvenirs would be the, the pennants. I know in the 50s there were all kinds of kids that had pennants on their bedroom walls from places that they had traveled to and they come they came in all sizes I've got quite a large collection here which I actually am selling on eBay many of them at the moment but from all over uh, this would be about a 12 inch uh, type of pennant Minnesota souvenir Minnesota and it's a uh, felt and felt pendants are most desirable this most of these are felt that I'm showing you they're uh, generally from the 50s and more valuable than the uh, you know the synthetic material of later on uh, so wherever you went Windsor Minneapolis Penticton BC now the thing too about you see the headdress there about these uh, pendants Society was a little different in those, day, in those days, so it was not, uh, you know, a bad thing to have a native address on there. So there's lots of examples of that kind of thing. But also just, uh, you know, simple things like the bridges, like Seattle, Washington there, and the Golden Gate Bridge, of course, in San Francisco. You could have a little memento with a pennant or geographic locations. This is uh, Wisconsin Del Dells. There's a rock of the, uh, in the area there. Toronto, this is a neat one because each of the uh, numbers is a separate little felt piece. And that's a little more dressed up. But if you were in Detroit and you went to a baseball game, getting a pennant and even having a team picture on it would be amazing uh, for the young person at the time. Well, today, these are highly collectible. This one is from 1961 when Detroit won the World Series. And on the back, there's all the players' names and uh, with a picture on the front. And it's felt, so still very, very collectible. That one is for the Detroit Tiger or baseball collector. Very, very important. So these were the 12 inch ones, uh, but if you look at the next size up, this is Niagara Falls, we've got about 23 inches or so there. Um, of course, Niagara Falls being such a popular travel destination, there'd be all kinds of those. Here's one from uh, Regina, 
And again, uh, RCMP seem to be a typical uh, little thing to have on a pennant. It's representative of Canada more than I suppose a lot of things at that time. And so that was that. Um, so there were general Canada's um, pennants or specific city pennants. Um, but if you then get into the giant king size ones, this is huge. This is, this is about 30 some inches. This is a Calgary one. It's felt and very large. Someone bought that when they traveled. This is really neat. It's got the uh, Union Jack and the Calgary, the Alberta flag. So um, this one would be quite a nice uh, piece for some collector, for, for either from Calgary or uh, pennant collector. Or going to a specific uh, place like Old Fort Henry, that would always be good to have a pennant representing that little place. Again, I've got so many here, um, but just, just a very quick look, uh, Las uh, Vegas, and uh, even when you go to other places like Bermuda, or a special event like Expo 67. Lots of good Expo 67 collectors out there. Again, uh, the RCMP and the native person together, McLeod, Alberta. Very typical of Canada, but if you go to Colorado, what we may see more there would be the symbol of the Bucking Bronco. And in Utah, the the uh, person with the uh, rifle and on the horse with the mountains in the background. So a lot of it is regional. The souvenirs contain, you know, the regional little logos and things that mementos would uh, focus on. And Salt Lake City again. So the, all these are actually from one collector, one collection. Um, from uh, this person's uh, childhood when they had traveled a great deal. And uh, this is a memory that uh, they have and no longer seem to have a need for. What do you get and bring home today in terms of travel? Uh, probably a little more expensive than, than some of these things. If you go to Switzerland, maybe you don't come back with a pennant, you come back with a watch, I don't know. But uh, we, we like to travel and this is one of the problems in this uh, problem of the pandemic that we have. Uh, our travel limitations are, are uh, in place and so um, once that opens up I think people are going to be very anxious to go uh, far and wide and uh, we'll see what happens. So this is just a, a small little sampling of the kinds of uh, mementos that uh, in the past people uh, kept and collected. and. Uh, treasured and uh, we have the uh, benefit of, of that today um, a lot of this stuff is still around and uh, you know you can you can have a look at it some of this I've sold on eBay um, I know a couple of the pennants I showed you have uh, just sold um, but uh, that's something to remember uh, you can find my eBay uh, site and uh, it will be explained at the end of the video happy to um, to uh, show you what I've off what I offer there uh, also, if you're near uh, near where my booth is at uh, Aberfoyle, um, you're more than welcome to drop by. Uh, Aberfoyle um, is um, off of Highway 401, just uh, on 6 south, but going north over the 401, about a mile, and um, safe. It's a very large open space, and uh, everyone wears a mask. And so they have the large fall and spring shows, which are very special as well. Uh, so uh, if you do, I'm booth 38, 39, 40, come by and uh, have a look. So uh, that's about it for today. Um, I would love to say happy traveling, but uh, there's still lots of opportunity to travel within our own country. You might even bring back a souvenir that uh, somebody 50 years from now is going to show others. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Bye for now.